I heard there's a deep fake going around of US Secretary of State Marco Rubio. We should definitely make a video about that. You can create these viral videos for like YouTube Shorts, TikTok, Instagram Reels, whatever, like all by just sending a voice message to this system. And by the end of today's video, I'm going to show you exactly how to build it. So now in just a couple minutes, the system has run. And if I come over to my TikTok account, I can just go ahead and refresh the page. And you can see here, we have a brand new video. Let's go ahead and watch this real quick. Someone just impersonated the Secretary of State using AI and nobody's talking about this. An unknown hacker created a fake signal account pretending to be Marco Rubio. Cool, so you get the idea there. And then if I come over to Instagram, I can refresh the page, same thing. You can see we have the same video published to Instagram. If you wanna get access to the workflow that we're building today, just click the link in the description, come into the classroom, head over to the resource library where you have access to all of my make.com and N8N templates. And then just come down here, it'll be in this faceless video section. So all you're gonna have to do is scroll all the way down to the bottom. I'll give you access to all the AI prompts I use. Go ahead, click the resource file and just click download and then you can open it up and start working. So let me give you a quick overview of how the system works and then we're gonna go through and break it down step by step. The system is super smart. It works with text messages or voice messages. It will research your topic if additional research is needed. It will write a viral script for you based off of proven YouTube strategies. It's then gonna send the script off to HeyGen to generate your digital clone and Eleven Labs to do the voiceover. And then it's gonna upload this to your TikTok and your Instagram channel using a third-party platform called Blotato, which is by far the best, cheapest, easiest way to upload your videos to every single social channel. So let's go through it. The first thing we set up here is just a really basic Telegram trigger. And we've just set this up to connect to our Telegram account. And if you've never connected to Telegram before, I'll leave a video up here of exactly how to do it. It literally takes two minutes, but basically you wanna go ahead and search for this app inside of Telegram called the Bot Father. And you just have to go through and type slash and click new bot and just follow the steps here to get a new API key for your Telegram bot. And then you can just link this up here. Super, super simple. This next step here is actually super important. This is protect your privacy and your security. What we're doing here is I've just hard coded in my chat ID and then we're grabbing the chat ID from the incoming message here. And we're just piping it in here. And we're basically checking to make sure that the chat ID from the incoming message matches my actual personal chat ID for my account. So that way nobody else has access to this system. Next, we just have a switch node and basically Basically, it's just seeing is this a text message or a voice message and then it's just routing it depending on whether it's text or if we sent an audio file. If it's an audio file, we're just using the telegram get trigger node to go ahead and grab that file. So if it's an audio file, it's going to send it down the bottom here and then we're just using another telegram node. You would just come into the side here and type telegram and go to telegram. Basically, you want to search for the get a file node down here. And then all we're doing is we're just grabbing the file ID that's coming in from this left panel over here, which is gonna be down here. We're literally just dragging and dropping this here. And we're just setting this download switch to true. So it's actually going to download the file for us and create this little binary file, which we can actually use for the rest of our flow. So then we're just passing the audio file to ChatGPT to just transcribe it so we can actually extract the audio and actually get text. So we can see here, it says, I heard there's a deep fake going around of US Secretary of State, Marco Rubio. We should definitely make a video about that. You can see it right here. One thing to note here is that the name of this field is called text. And the reason to note that is because we actually created a set node up top here, which is just going to grab the text from Telegram, say if we actually typed to Telegram instead of sent a voice note, we just wanna make sure that this field is named text the same way that it's named text coming out of the audio field. The reason we do that, so it doesn't matter if we're typing to the Telegram bot or if we're sending an audio message, the research agent will actually be able to pick it up either way. So let me open up the research agent here and it just has these kind of three tasks that it's performing. One, first determine if the incoming text requires or requests additional research. If additional research is not needed, simply output the incoming text and nothing else. Do not call the perplexity tool. So we're gonna be doing our online research with perplexity. The reason I set it up this way is to basically accommodate all different types of use cases. The first one is if I have like a new story or I heard something and I wanna actually do additional research. And the second way is if I already have the information that I don't really need more research on. So for example, in my case, like I have a lot of information inside my community about like, you know, the psychology behind why people choose you and what is primal branding and why this matters for anyone interested in AI and automation and things like that. And this is already like pretty detailed and thorough, right? And I don't need additional research for this. I can actually just take this information and directly write a script for it. If additional research is not needed, simply output the incoming text and nothing else. Don't call the perplexity tool to do more research. Only if additional research is needed, call the perplexity tool to research highest impact and trending news from the latest 24 hours, then select the story that's the most likely to go viral and output a summary and key details, maximizing for engagement and intrigue. And then I just piped in the incoming text here, which is coming from the node immediately before. So we can see here, this is just json.txt and I'm just literally just dragging that in there. 
And I did just update one thing here on number three, which basically says call the perplexity tool to research highest impact and trending news. And then I added directly related to the incoming text from the last 24 hours. So this part was really important because what I was finding is that this was actually just going ahead and researching like high impact news from the last 24 hours, but it wasn't actually related to the incoming message. So I really wanted to make it clear what we're supposed to research. And if you see here, we just piped in the incoming text and this has our transcription here, which said, heard there's a deep fake going around of US Secretary of State Marco Rubio. We should definitely make a video about that. And so if we come into the output here, you can see now that we have the latest news on the deep fake involving Marco Rubio. In recent news, an unknown individual used AI technology to impersonate US Secretary of State Marco Rubio, contacting several high-ranking officials, including three foreign ministers. That's actually crazy that we're doing this now, like low-key, super scary. So the way we set this up is we actually just attach the perplexity tool to this research agent. And you go ahead and you click the plus and you would just type in perplexity and you'd connect the tool here. This is with one of the recent updates of N8N, so make sure you're running the latest version. And basically all you have to do here is connect this to your perplexity account. Just go ahead and you would click down here to create a new credential. And then if you come over to perplexity.ai and go into your account and go into all settings, then you can come down here to API keys, create a new API key, and then just you would go ahead and paste that in here. And then I just have the text say automatically defined by the model. So that way the research agent is smart and it's gonna pass the appropriate text onto the perplexity tool. And then I've just checked yes to simplify output. So we're not getting any unnecessary details. From there, we're passing the research onto the script writer. The script writer is actually trained on thousands of YouTube videos. And so we know we're gonna get a really high impact script coming out of this. So let me drag this over here and you can see the script. Someone just impersonated the Secretary of State using AI and nobody's talking about this. An unknown hacker created a fake signal account pretending to be Marco Rubio, but here's the scary part. And it goes on. So you can see how we really have this format of like a strong hook, builds curiosity, and then we have the rest of the content being super, super solid for any type of short form video platform. So I'm just gonna show you these two prompts that we use. The first one is super simple. This is just the user message, write a viral YouTube script about, and then I'm literally just piping in the research from the research agent. Now the system message is where we get really detailed about the specific structure to make sure that our videos go viral. You are a YouTube short script generator. Your task is to turn any news, trending content, or impactful information into a 60 second YouTube short script, approximately 250, 300 words. The final script should be structured for spoken delivery. No visual direction is needed. Focus on grabbing attention immediately, delivering fast value, et cetera, et cetera. And then we have information about the core structure to start with like, uh, you know, hook and the payoff. We want to start with a scroll stopper. We want to begin with a, you know, the action to ask provocative questions or make a controversial statement. Then we go ahead to kind of like give some examples of the hook and the setup and the core elements and all that good stuff. And so we give it a bunch of principles to follow like evoking emotion, surprise, curiosity, outrage. We want to keep it tight, short sentences, no fluff, right? So this is really perfectly structured for any sort of viral content on short form social media. So the next thing we do is we actually pass this script over to HeyGen. And I basically have a separate little note here that makes things really, really easy for you to set up where you're just gonna come in here, you're gonna put in your HeyGen API key, the ID of your avatar and the voice ID that you wanna use. So let me just go ahead and show you where to grab all that stuff. So in order to get access to HeyGen, you're gonna come over here and you're gonna create your account. And then you're gonna wanna go ahead here and you're gonna wanna click create a new avatar. And then I just go to start with a video and I personally used all my video slots, but you're gonna come here and I'll just show you what this looks like if I, for me, I have to go to add new look and you'll basically get the same thing, right? So add new look, start with a video. If you just come in here, go to next and you just upload a footage of you talking to the camera, it can literally be anywhere. And like these generate in like a couple minutes, you'll have a brand new clone ready to go. From there, what you wanna do is you wanna actually grab the ID of your avatar. So you just come in here and click copy avatar ID and come in here and you would just paste this into the avatar ID field here. And then to get your API key, just come into your name, go to settings and go to subscription and API and get access to the HeyGen API. And right here, you wanna create a new API token and you would copy this. And again, you're gonna come back in here and paste this in here. For the voice ID, this is actually a little bit tricky because I want to get the best quality voice. So first I trained my voice in 11 Labs, which definitely has the you know best audio quality for your voices. And then I linked the voice from 11 Labs to HeyGen. So let me just show you where that lives. If you come in here, what you would do is you go to integrate third-party voice and then just click import voice, select 11 Labs and then paste in your 11 Labs API key. And then you have access to all of your voices. And so for here, you can see I have my Duncan professional uh, voice clone here and you just come into these dots, click get voice ID, come over here and paste that in here. In order to create your voice in 11 Labs, I can show you this really quick. You just come in here and you go to voices and you click create or clone a voice. And basically I use the professional clone because it's by far the best quality, but you can use kind of a 
Insta voice clone here and just come in here and you basically either record yourself talking to 11 labs or drag an audio file in here. And then in just a couple of minutes, you'll have a brand new voice clone ready to go that you can then link over to HeyGen to pair with your avatar. If you want to get your 11 labs API key, come into your account, go into API keys and just click create API key and then copy that over into HeyGen when you're linking up your voices. So now in just a couple of minutes, the system has run. And if I come over to my TikTok account, I can just go ahead and refresh the page. And you can see here, we have a brand new video. Let's go ahead and watch this real quick. Someone just impersonated the Secretary of State using AI and nobody's talking about this. An unknown hacker created a fake signal account pretending to be Marco Rubio. Cool, so you get the idea there. And then if I come over to Instagram, I can refresh the page, same thing. So you can see we have the same video published to Instagram. So the next thing we have to do is we actually have to call the HeyGen API in order to generate the video. If you wanna build AI automations for real, I highly recommend getting used to reading API documentation. It's one of the most beneficial skills you can learn. So this is the API documentation for HeyGen and I know it looks complicated. Frankly, it is complicated. One of the cool things they do is they have a curl request here and the curl request is basically how we set this up inside of N8N. So what you would do here is you basically can just go ahead and you can click copy to this once you set up all the properties and you would come over here and I'm just gonna go ahead and show you this just on a blank node and go to add node, type in HTTP request, go ahead and add this in and see here we can go to import curl and I'll just paste that in and click import and give it a second. And in just a second, we can see we have the URL we have the right method, we have all of the headers we need, we have all the body content and everything that we need to actually generate a video. So let me show you the setup in here that I'm actually running. It's basically the same with just a few more details. So basically we have the method set to post, we have this URL that we're calling api.heygen.com v2 video generate, and we sent these headers, the X API key, and we went ahead here and now I just grabbed the HeyGen API key from the node that we set before. So this makes it really easy for you to come in and customize this with your info and you don't actually have to go in to this HTTP request at all. The next part is the JSON body. And I went into a lot more detail here because I wanted to be really specific about the quality of the video that we're creating. So we have some video inputs. We have the avatar ID here, which again is the ID of like our HeyGen video clone. For the voice, I input the text from the script writer. So that's coming from here and I grabbed this here. And I basically replaced a bunch of formatting things to clean this up to get rid of like extra quotes and spaces and parentheses and any extra formatting that is actually gonna cause the JSON to break. And so you can see if we look over here, we have a really nice clean output of the video script. The next thing we put in is the voice ID. We went ahead here and just piped in the voice ID. And then we have the speed and the pitch. The speed is just set to one. I honestly might wanna set this to like 0.9. I think I talk a little bit fast. The pitch is 30, the emotion is friendly. The model we're using is 11 Labs Multilingual V2 and then similarity, stability, and style. If you wanna get a better understanding of exactly what these parameters are, you can come into 11 Labs and you just go to text-to-speech and we're basically just setting all of these parameters over here. So speed will tell you what the speed is, stability, you can see increasing the stability will make the voice more consistent between regenerations, but it can also make it sound a bit more monotone. And then similarity is basically boost the similarity to the example that you uploaded or if it's varied. And then style exaggeration is like how expressive the speech is. And then we just set the dimensions 720 by 1280 for vertical format, the aspect ratio, same nine by 16. And then we turned captions to true because I wanted to auto caption the videos because it's going to automatically post for us. And so we don't have the option to add those captions in after the fact, we actually have to do it when we generate the video. And then for the title, I literally just put the date because it actually doesn't matter what the title is because we're never gonna see it. And then from there, what we're doing is we just set up a wait node. And so I just set this up to wait one minute. And then what it's going to do is it's going to check to see if the video is done. So here we have a very similar node to the other HTTP request, except we're just doing a get method. And we've changed the URL that we're calling to this URL here. And then we've just piped in the video ID from the create avatar node, which is where we're actually making the request, right? So we're just pulling in the video ID here. Then we're setting up the same thing, right? The our X API key is the only other field that we need here. So basically what's happening is this is checking to see if the video is finished processing. Every time it checks, it's going to send it to this if node to see if it's finished processing or not finished processing. So we basically have an if node just to see, does this video URL exist? So if the video URL exists, we know the video is done, it's finished processing, and we can pass it on for publishing. If the video doesn't exist yet, we know that HeyGen is still generating our video. And what it's gonna do is it's just gonna pass this back to the wait node. It's gonna wait another minute. It's gonna check again, and then it's gonna pass it back on to see is this done or not done. Again, if it's done, it passes it on. If it's not done, it waits a minute. And so this is just a way that you can constantly check to see if it's done. So you're not wasting a bunch of time guessing. And you're also not trying to grab a file that hasn't finished processing yet, in which case you'll just get an error.
So the next thing we're doing is we're setting up Lotato. This is how we can auto publish to literally every single platform. It's incredible. Let me show you the site here so you know what's going on. This is Blotato. They are perfect for posting viral faceless videos and things like that. There's all these testimonials. This was started by Sabrina Romanov, who's one of the biggest AI influencers in the space. It's really incredible. And if I just go ahead and log in here, Basically, I mostly only use this for the API, but if you want, you can go ahead and you can repurpose all your content, taking videos and turning them into like LinkedIn posts or Instagram posts or whatever, or Twitter posts. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description where you can sign up to get started, but they definitely have the best API around. I've seen to publish to every platform. It is so easy to set up. You literally just come in here and you log in with any of your social media accounts. And then all you have to do is copy the accounts IDs of like the accounts you want to publish to. Super, super simple. The other thing you just have to copy is copy your API key. And from there, we're just setting up all our Blotato IDs. And so again, for like Instagram and TikTok, these are mine. And they're coming from here, right? If I want to go to Instagram, I just click copy account ID. And then I would just come in here and paste in my Instagram account ID. Same thing for YouTube. And then over here, I'm just pasting in my API key from where I showed you earlier. And now I'm making another request to Blotato. The reason that we do this is because Instagram and TikTok require like a publicly available URL. And so just coming out of HeyGen, the social media platforms actually won't have access to it. So in order to publish everywhere, we first upload it to Blotato and then Blotato handles the rest of the publishing for us so that we don't have to worry about making things publicly available or not. Blotato also has really good API documentation. If you come into the help here, and just scroll down to the bottom and you can go into like this API guides and you can come into the API reference and you can see how we're publishing posts or uploading media or things like that. So in here, we're just using a post method and this is the URL that we're sending it to. And then we're just grabbing our API key from the set node before. And then we're using this JSON here, which is literally just the URL of the video that's coming from the request to HeyGen. So if we come in here, I'm using this video URL caption because I wanna make sure that we're grabbing the video that actually has the captions rather than the one without. And then the next thing I'm doing is I'm just writing a caption for the video. So this is for Instagram or TikTok. And so I'm just basically saying, write a caption for this video script. And then I'm grabbing the script all the way back here from the script writer. And I'm just pulling this in here. And then I just say, write it at sixth grade reading level. So it's really, really basic. And you can see here that since I've dragged that in, this is actually the full script for our video. And then here, I just have a system prompt that's going to give it a like kind of vibe marketing style tone of voice, like really casual, conversational, and relatable, like the format for the caption that it should follow, any rules for the content, and then just like an example. And again, this will all be available inside the community. And then from there, we're just using Blotato again to publish to TikTok or Instagram. But like you can see here, we can actually publish to all of these platforms if we want to. In this case, I just have it set up for the two. We're publishing to TikTok using this URL. We're piping in the Blotato API key. And then we're sending this body JSON, which basically has some stuff that you don't really need to worry about this too much. You won't need to change any of this. These are basically just your TikTok settings. Like if you actually go into like the settings of any of your TikTok videos, these will actually look familiar to you. And then from there, we're just piping in the text from the caption writer here. And all I'm doing is adding to string on the end of it. Because if I don't, let me just show you what this looks like. We basically get this and we get all of these extra spaces and things like that and just some extra formatting that basically Blotato and any of the social platforms have a hard time publishing. And you're gonna get like a JSON error if you don't add this. And so you're not gonna actually be able to publish. So we just wanna make sure that we're sending everything to a string. And then we're just piping in the URLs from the media URLs, which is coming from here. And then again, the account ID that we're using for our TikTok account in this case, which is coming directly from this node where we set our IDs earlier. And we're doing the same thing for Instagram. Basically nothing has changed except for this JSON body, which is actually specific to the Instagram platform. If you thought this video was helpful, please make sure to subscribe to the channel, hop into the community if you wanna get access to this workflow. And if you enjoy creating viral faceless videos, check out this video up here where I show you how to make those viral Yeti vlog style videos. I'll see you over there.